beep. On my quest to teach you guys to be the best producers that you can be, I want to teach you guys techniques that will make your bank account stay the same, but make you sound better as you become a more confident producer to achieve your vision. I recently got asked this by Chris Smith 92. Can you do a video on the right way to use top loops? I can never get them to fit my track and they always clash with the other drums. I want to show you how I utilize top loops in a very methodical way so that it comes out sounding clean and it doesn't come out clashing with what I have. First thing I do when creating a song is if I know the genre or the vibe I'm going for, I pick the drums that I know will be always there. And that's usually going to be the kick, the open hand and the clap. As I do this, I pick a clap or an open hat that will be my final clap and open hat. You want to create something that sounds good, close to what you're referencing or close to what your vision. Once you have that, if you have an idea of where the beat is going to go, try your best to get that vibe going. I want to use a top loop to help me dictate the beat where it's going to go. Once I have it, since I already have my open hat and clap set in stone, I don't really need the clap and open hat from this. So what I want to do is I want to go into this loop. I'm going to go into the envelope section, clip and gain. In this section, I'm going to be able to automate the gain on the individual sample, not the mixer, but here to remove what I don't want from it, which is again, I have an open hat, so I don't want the one eights from it. And I have a clap, so I don't want the 1.2 from it. But from there, anything in between is fair game. Again, we're grabbing what's in between because I'm already deciding that the clap and open hat I have are perfect. They're fine. No need to judge them and no need to layer them any way further. Now, if you notice, it's still not sounding good, but now we have our clap and open hat sounding right in the front. However, the reason it's not sounding good is because we are not on the same page. The drummer is doing something completely different, playing at a different swung beat, and we need to fix that. So the way we do that is now we're going to click here and we're going to hit command control U. Notice that there's this weird sound that occurs there. And that's because, again, the quantized formula with the beats is doing something weird. So what I'm going to do is put it so that it only goes, reaches the end, and that's it. It doesn't reverse into itself. And now we don't get that. So understanding this section when using top loops is very important. From there to the right of that, we have a gate, which I recommend that you use. It thins out the drum loop. Now, the reason this is useful is because if you have a drum loop that has reverb galore, has too much release, can mess with what you have. And the better you become as a producer, the more you're going to understand how reverb is super important to tie stuff together. And when you have multiple reverbs going off, it creates a weird landscape for your brain to go like, okay, you know, like what the hell is being presented to me? It feels like I'm in a cave in space and underground. <laughs> And make it sound good now now if you're in ableton you can do this if you're not in ableton then you would use a gate and this is why gates were invented they're useful for when you have a loop or when you have something that is too busy or has too much release to it and you're trying to dwindle it down so in this scenario what i want to do is i want to leave this at 100 percent and i'm going to use a gate to shape the drums very similar to the way we did in ableton except now we have a little bit more control on how the sound is being Remove. The first thing we have here is a floor, which is very important because you don't have to gate the sound all the way to silence. You can have the sound stay at a certain volume before it's allowed to pop out even more. We can still hear the drum loop here. We're getting some signal and the floor decides that level. You can have it up and not do anything or we can have it here. We're still there. You know, you don't lose everything, but you do quiet it down. Now from there, we're going to put the threshold down to allow the important parts the transient parts to pop now as it does this you can control the characters of it how fast um, it does it and how fast it lets go releases how far it lets go and the attack is how fast it reduces So what I'm getting from this drum loop the most I can hear it as a producer is just the the, the nice da 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 
Da-da-da. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just allow for that to happen. And that makes a lot more sense in terms of groove and rhythm. Needs to be. And there we go. And that's one a drum loop there. From there, I can process it further. I, I can make it go into something, but I'm going to leave it as so because now from there, okay, this is my snare drum. Now I want to find a drum loop that's going to add a 116 fast vibe to it. So we're going to use a top loop for that. However, if you have a sample pack that allows you to pick individually, for example, you have more than just top loops, you have shaker loops, etc. then I recommend just going for a shaker, adding this and you're ready to go. From there, we would do the same thing, command U. We're gonna go into beats mode, we're gonna go into non-repeat mode, and then we're just gonna lower this down. However, let's assume that you can't do that. Well, let's go into a top loop again, find what we want, what we think is gonna give us that feel. Beats, singular mode. Gonna quantize command U. Going to go into the clip gain. And again, I don't need the open hat. I'm going to do this just in case there's like a snare hit somewhere over there. For this, I just want the high. So I'm just going to grab an EQ. Notice how I'm not crowding the open hat as well. I'm giving the open hat its space. Because again, this open hat is going to finish that 116 beat for me. I want to present to you guys now another way to use top loops. And this one is a bit more, you want to be careful because you can get a little carried away and you can use top loops to accent or to add that last remaining 5% you feel is missing. For example, you can use a top loop that sounds fat to bring it in and add texture. Okay. And this is a technique that I saw a track do in a master class where he grabs like a drum loop or like a breakbeat loop from the 60s, 70s, and then he'll do this. From there, he'll gate it as well. We'll go beats mode, one mode, gate. And the ideas for this drum loop And from there, other things that you can do with drum loops that are pretty cool is you can find drum loops that do really cool stuff maybe at the end or on certain beats and you can use it for yourself. For example, I'll try and find one here. Now, the last way you can use drum loops is like this. You can use it to accent your drums. For example, you might like the, the open hat in a certain drum loop. Or you want things to happen here and there that, that happen every eight bars so that the drum loop doesn't get boring. Then you can bring other drum loops into the picture and utilizing everything that we know. And from there... We're going to pretty much delete everything. And then just here where you want to have like a jump in the beat. For me here is one of the places. So let's see if I can bring in this guy nice and clean here. Oh. And then I want a strong beat on this guy. So we're going to allow this clap to come in and layer up with the one we have. Ole. Maybe the ending of one to help us bring it back at the end. That helps us go back into the loop. Okay. And there we go. We'll have that. You can hold alt shift on the next one maybe switch it to the right now the beautiful thing about this is that you can finally get all these drum loops to work well together by adding a groove so i'm going to use a groove here you can use any one you like 116 is the name of the game for instance i could go with 164 click on all of these 164 command
seems like the answers to everything in life is having the confidence to know what you want and going after that. You don't know what you want and when you're nervous and when you're not thinking in the moment, this leads to stuff that just doesn't sound good. If you follow this process, you will have drum loops that work that don't sound weird. I can't promise you'll have a banger one, but you'll have a clean one that makes sense to your listeners that you can be proud of. If you guys enjoyed the video, consider checking out this video where I go over the noob production mistakes i still do to this day after producing for quite some time these are things that will save you time and if you relate well there we go we can suffer together giving meaning to that mistake and that's always happy producing